Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service this morning. There will be another service after this one at Bishop Wilton. Next week's service is being, has been filmed in um, Bishop Wilton Church, St Edith's, uh, because we're away. I would appreciate if you all uh, get a chance to look at that service, um, as it's been done with much better cameras and much uh, lovelier surroundings. Um, so I would appreciate your comments um, when you have watched it. All of you who are sending your children back to school this week, I wish you well. And particularly if there are some children watching, I hope it goes well for you. We'll be thinking about you. So we take a moment of quiet as we begin our service. Hidden God, we worship you. By ourselves, we could not know you. No human wisdom can discover you. No argument lead to you. No enterprise reveal you. In the wealth of its knowledge, the world fails to find you. But you, you came, came to, to search, search for us in the frailty of a human life. life. You trusted yourself to the fragile faith of wandering disciples. We praise you that in our very weakness we can know you, that stumbling blocks become stepping stones, and the foolishness of the cross, the very truth that quickens us to life. Hidden God, we worship you. And we turn to confession. We confess, O oh God, that we breathe the proud spirit of the world, the spirit which scorns the way of weakness, boasts of its cleverness, clings to knowledge as a means of power, and seeks to prove its worth 
by belittling others. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. <coughs> Hidden God, your wisdom unsettles our values and compels our love. Fill us with a desire to search for your truth, that being content to be fools for Christ, we may transform the world. Give, Give us, us eyes, eyes to see, see as you see, see that, that we, we may follow your way of truth and righteousness. And the collect for today. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The epistle reading is taken from Romans chapter 13, beginning to read at verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments, are summed up in this word, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to awake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkardness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church, and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. To misquote something I read in an article this week, where two or three are gathered together, there are tea and biscuits. As Linda will tell you, this has certainly been a guiding principle in my priestly ministry. Many years ago, two ladies I shared tea and biscuits with, and also hopefully something of Jesus's presence too, 
each spoke to me of a long-standing row going back many years that still hadn't been resolved. They both still came to church, but the hurt was still raw. And I realise that the reason they came to so many mostly different services and never helped out together in the kitchen at social events was because of the deep gulf that lay between them. I tried to encourage them to meet and talk things through, even if the best they could have done was agree to differ, they could have recognised the common ground that they both shared, not least their faith, and not be blinded just by this area of difficulty. But it just wasn't to be. They have now both been promoted to glory, and I'm sure in eternity their hurts are healed, and they are reconciled. But if only they could have done it during their lives. The last 20 years of avoiding each other and carrying that hurt and resentment could have been avoided and all that energy put into more constructive things. If they could have pulled together they would have been a pretty formidable force, but it wasn't to be. Archbishop David used to say that what should mark us out as Christians isn't that we will always agree with each other. That won't ever happen. It is rather in the quality of our disagreements. How we deal with fallings out and even how we live together as a Christian community with people we may sometimes find difficult, that is the mark of our Christian faith. And the other side of the coin is that one of the things that can put people off from joining a church is backstabbing and gossip. People expect more for us, from us as Christians. This morning's Gospel provides us with a blueprint for dealing with a situation where someone has in some way hurt us. Some commentators think Matthew wrote it based on the teachings of Jesus to address the inevitable fallings out and challenges that were being faced by the early church as they sought to live together as a new sort of community, modelling Jesus' example of love, service, sharing, generosity and forgiveness. In the Gospel, Matthew lays out a process for dealing with situations that have gone wrong between you and another person. In the first instance, there is to be a conversation. It isn't easy sharing with someone that they have in some way hurt you. These can be difficult conversations to have. Sometimes it is just easier to avoid the person and avoid the issue, as my two friends did. But all that means is that things fester as the days, weeks, months and even years go on. Another route some people take is to simply leave the church, which leaves them feeling hurt, angry and very let down. So if there is an issue, Follow the advice that when two or three are gathered together, there there will be tea, biscuits and the presence of Jesus, and have that difficult conversation. In my experience, after such a chat, there is a new depth of understanding and respect. As I say, it may be that you agree to disagree on the particular issue, but you do recognise how much you do actually share and can build on. But if this doesn't work, then try and see if a conversation supported by the wisdom of a couple of other members of the congregation may help to sort things out. This is often called mediation, 
and again really can help people to hear each other rather than just being angry with each other. The person mediating helps the two people recognise the hurt on both sides and gives them both space to move on. Finally, if all else seems to fail, Matthew says, the whole church is to be involved. And if that doesn't work, then the person is to be treated as a Gentile and a tax collector. And I think this is a very tricky part of the text. It seems a slightly odd thing to say. Are we being told to exclude someone if they don't see the error of their ways? This cannot be the right reading as it cuts across everything that Jesus taught about love, inclusivity and walking the extra mile with people. I am sure what is being said is just as Jesus reached out again and again to the outsiders of his time, so we should continue to love, care and support people, even if they seem to have moved away from the church community. And it's interesting that the passage in this morning's Gospel actually comes after the parable of the lost sheep, which is a powerful way of thinking about how Jesus is always seeking the lost, the hurt, the excluded. And that we share in his ministry when we do the same. As Brother Roger who founded the community at Teze said, reconciliation always brings a springtime to the soul. Reconciliation always brings a springtime to the soul.
and we come to intercession. The response to through our lives and by our prayers is your kingdom come. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. Lord God, in Jesus you came in the body, flesh of our flesh and bone of our bone, one with us in searing pain and delirious laughter. We thank you that you did not remain an idea, even a religious idea, but walked, wept and washed feet amongst us. By your love, change our ideas, especially our religious ideas, into living signs of your work and will. Through our lives and by our prayers, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Lord God, in Jesus you touched the suffering, listened to the ignored, gave the depressed something to hope for, you bandaged the broken with love and you healed them. We believe that your power to heal is still present, so on your help we call. We remember those whose minds are menaced by thoughts which worry or wound them. We remember those whose hearts are broken because love has gone, or because the light they lived by has turned to darkness. We remember those whose feet walk in circles, stopping only when they are tired, resting only to walk in circles again. We remember those whose flesh and bone or mind and spirit are filled with pain. We remember those who feel discarded or disposable. We remember those with coronavirus and those who have given their lives to look after them. O oh Christ, put your hands where our prayers beckon. Through our lives and by our prayers, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Lord God, in Jesus your body was broken by the cowardly and the powerful. The judgment hall of Pilate knew your silence as surely as your critics knew your voice. In word and silence, take on the powerful of the world today. Those whose word sentences some to cruelty or unmerited redundancy. Those whose word transfers wealth or weapons for the sake of profit or prejudice. Those whose silence condones the injustice they have the power to change. O Saviour of the poor, liberate your people. Through our lives and by our prayers, your Lord, kingdom come. Lord God, by the authority of Scripture, we learn that we are the body of Christ. Yes, even we, who worship in different ways, even we, whose understanding of you is so changeable, even we who in our low moments make an idol of our insignificance. We are your body and we are told, then Lord, make us like you, that our souls may be the stained glass through which light and purpose bring beauty and meaning into the world. Through our lives, and by our prayers, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Your kingdom come, Lord, in joy and generosity, in the small and in the large, the ordinary and the special, and to you be the glory, now and always. Amen. Amen.
hidden God, we commend ourselves to your keeping. And we thank you for new strength given to us this morning. Grant that our hearts may continue in the peace and rest we have found in worshipping you. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace and may God himself, the God of peace, make you holy through and through and keep you sound in spirit, soul and body. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the man who walks in your favor, who loves all your words and hides them like treasure. In the darkest place of his desperate heart, they are alive. A strong, sure light Sometimes I call out your name But I cannot find you I look for your face But you are not there Touch me and 